All right, hi everyone. Um, I wanted to just go over the electrophoresis assignment. I started grading them and I noticed that a lot of people didn't understand what the questions were asking. I know I introed it a little bit, um, but we didn't spend that much time on it. And you know, this is obviously usually something that we spend more time on and actually do in lab. Um, and so I wanted to clarify this a little bit um, and then give people a chance to fix their assignment and resubmit because really I, I, I didn't want to just grade them as you did it and that's fine because um, a lot of us sort of missed the, the entire point and, and that's not what it's about. I want you guys to understand what what the what this is and 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 sort of understand the concepts here. So the assignment basically was to answer these data analysis problems that were from chapter six, right? And so particularly, this is pertaining to digesting chromatin, right, with a nuclease, okay? So a couple things. We've talked about chromatin before. Um, remember that chromatin are, is, is DNA and protein, right? And particularly the proteins that we talked about were histones. And remember that histones um, basically sorry let me just go here right histones um are the proteins that essentially wrap oh hey, wait a second i gotta fix this one second guys give me get, i'm gonna pause it let me just okay uh we're back all right sorry i had i can never figure that out quickly <laughs> um okay so we're talking about chromatin and the structure of chromatin and again this is something we went we went over in in past lectures um and so remember chromatin is composed of dna right that's basically packaged by specific proteins called histones and then remember that there are other proteins that are there as well to sort of um help package it okay now in this data analysis problem you have chromatin right that basically is in a tube and you add a nuclease to it, okay? A nuclease is an enzyme that's going to cut DNA, okay? It, it's, it doesn't cleave proteins, okay? It, it, it will not cleave proteins, those are proteases. Nuclease will particularly just cleave DNA. Now, if you have chromatin in a tube with a nuclease, the only place the nuclease can cut the DNA is here in this linker DNA because all the rest of this DNA is wrapped around and really closely associated and wound um, with these proteins, okay? So um, you have a certain amount of chromatin in the tube, you have a certain amount of nuclease, the nuclease will cleave as many places as it can, right? Okay, and so basically each one of these pieces is 200 base pairs long, okay? So let's keep that in mind and so Again, now, if you have your tube with your chromatin that you add a nuclease to, those nucleases will cut that chromatin in as many places as it can, okay? And so what you see here, again, up here are gonna be parts of that chromatin, right, again, or just let's think about DNA that hasn't been cut, okay? Because there wasn't enough nuclease around to cut it in between every single or, you know, to clean in between every single nucleosome, essentially, okay? So if the nuclease was able to cleave it between every single, um, essentially, nucleosome here, you would only have 200 base pair fragments. And when you look at that on a gel, you would only see a band at this 200 base pair um, spot, okay? So what all these other bands are that are larger are just fragments that are larger because that nuclease um, did not cleave every single linker DNA between those nucleosomes, okay? If that makes sense, I'm hoping you're following me. So again, what's up here? So imagine you loaded your DNA here. If we think about now, we're talking about electrophoresis, right? Um, again, we had our chromatin in a tube, we added, nuclease to it, the nuclease would cleave in as many places as it could in between the nucleosomes, like I showed you, okay? Now you take that cut DNA, right? Because essentially we're really now only looking at the DNA. When we're talking about electrophoresis here, 
um, we're only looking at the DNA. Now, there are other types of electrophoresis where you can separate proteins by size, but everything we're talking about here is pertaining to the DNA, okay? We're only doing DNA electrophoresis. All right, so if we talk about the process of electrophoresis, right? Um, we're talking about the movement of DNA from, you know, this is a positive electrode up here and a negative electrode down here. Sorry, lie. This is a negative electrode. This is a positive electrode. DNA has a negative charge, right? So we load our DNA into our gel. We put it into a chamber with, with buffer, right? We basically provide this electrical current um, and the DNA will move towards the positive electrode, right? It's going to move this way, okay? And it will move based on its size, okay? So all of the 200 base pair fragments will travel this far down the gel. If it's 400 base pairs, it will be here, 600, 800. Um, any uncut DNA, right, will still be up here, okay? So imagine you basically took you know, DNA that was all wound up or all bound up here, right? A whole bunch of it that was never cut up. It can't move through the gel. It's too big, okay? And so that would not move at all. So let me just, and, and I think I also provided a video for you guys um, that really gets into a little bit more about the process of electrophoresis. So if, if you need a little bit more, go back and look at that video, okay? But let me just, um, I thought I had a little more. Yeah, okay, so let me just go back to here because now I'm talking about the electrophoresis, right? So again, remember, you load your samples here, right? We load them up here. We again put it in the chamber, right, with a buffer. We, we basically provide an electrical current and that DNA will move this way based on size. So those bands that you see, right, everything, any DNA that's in this band is of the same size. The DNA here in this band is a different size. So if we said this was 200 base pairs, then this one's 400, this is 600, right? I'm just saying hypothetically. Um, and now usually you would run some sort of DNA ladder so that you can tell what size it is. But again, basically smaller fragments travel further, larger fragments don't travel as far, okay? Um, all right, so again, a little bit more about the sort of basics of electrophoresis. Um, but I think it was necessary to really understand where that nuclease is cutting, okay? The nuclease is cutting at this linker DNA. If it cuts enough, or if it cut every single one of these, all you would have was a 200 base pair band. So let me go back now to the assignment here, okay? Now, this gel's a little messier, right? Um, and this is kind of in actuality, Usually when you run a gel, it might look something like this. And so where you see the brightness is, is DNA, okay? Um, so one, it says, why does the undigested sample, sample one, appear as it does? Okay, so wherever you see bright, that's DNA, okay? So there's nothing here. The only place where there's DNA is up here, basically, in the well. Okay, so why? That hasn't been cut because sample one didn't have any DNAs in it, right? Um, let's see. Oh, I guess it didn't tell you that. Well, it didn't, okay? <laughs> so if there's no, not DNAs, well, nuclease, right? DNAs would work too. So if there is no nuclease in that tube that you had your chromatin in originally, right? Um, there, it's not gonna be cut. Right, And so this is going to be this big, big piece of, of DNA all wound up that's basically trying to get through these small pores of the gel. It can't move. It stays there. Okay? So it's not because there was no DNA there. It's because it, ha it could not be, it wasn't cut because there was no enzyme in there to cut it. Okay? So you see here, time of digestion. Sorry. That's where we're getting. So the nuclease was added. However, they just loaded it right away. So there was no time allowed for that nuclease to cut that DNA or cleave it, okay? So nothing was cut. Now, after five minutes of that DNA, right, that chromatin being subject to the nuclease, okay, it's going to start cleaving 
at these linker DNAs, okay? Now again, if it's only a small amount of time, it's only gonna cleave some of these, right? And so imagine if you have this big, 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 giant, you know, really, really long um, piece of DNA or a whole bunch of chromatin, and you only get a couple cuts. Well, you're gonna have a lot of large fragments, right? And maybe a couple smaller ones, okay? But for the most part, you know, you you have kind of some some larger ones still up here, right? So you kind of see a lot of the, a lot of DNA still up here, but then you start to see this uh, some smaller fragments because it's being cut, okay? So um, it says explain the ladder like band patterns in samples two to five, okay? So two to five again, ladder like that's because the nuclease is now cleaving the chromatin at those linker DNA spots and basically creating fragments, DNA fragments. And so now you're starting to see those fragments on the gel, okay? So these are smaller pieces of DNA that can now travel further down. All right, now it says, what kind of DNA molecules are present in bands A, B, C, and D? So why don't we consider, and I feel like maybe they could have gave you a little more information, right? As I looked at these questions a little bit more, A, B, C, and D. Okay, let's call A, B, C, and D um, 200, 400, 600, and 800, okay? So in terms of those sizes, okay? So 200 base pairs, remember, is the size of the nucleosome. And so no matter how long you leave the chromatin with the nuclease, the smallest fragment you're gonna get ever get is the 200, okay? So that's if everything was cut. All right. Um, Okay, so let's go back here, and again, let's consider A as the 200 fragment, um, B as the 400, uh, what did I say? Oops, am I going backwards? Sorry, yeah, right? 200, 400, 600, and 800, okay? Now, you can see at five minutes time, you have a lot of 800 base pair fragments, and even larger than that, because again, there hasn't been enough time allotted for that nuclease to cleave that DNA, right, in as many spots, right? The longer the time, the longer the chromatin is exposed to that nuclease, the more cuts it will make at that linker DNA. All right, so hopefully that helps. So now it says, what kind of DNA molecules are present at A, B, C, and D? All right, that's the 200 base pair, um, you know, uh, essentially nucleosome. Uh, if you, it, what you can call this part uh, B or that 400 base pair is basically you can call this the 200 base pair, right? Like I said, just one, you can call that a mono nucleosome, okay? Um, and then you can call this 400 base pair a dinucleosome, meaning it's two of these together, right? And then you can call the the 600 a trinucleosome, and then the the next one a tetranucleosome, whatever. But you could have basically said, you know, of course corresponds to 200 base pairs, 400, 600, and 800, which is one nucleosome, you know, two, uh, you know, whatever, four, and then two and then three and then four nucleosomes okay so so that's the idea so even if you said 200 400 600 800 base pairs that would be fine but because again you have to make the connection between this and this okay and also this all right so i hope that that helps now it says number four why did the bands migrate closer to the cathode right as the length of digestion increased so why did they move closer to the positive electrode, why? Because as you increase the time of digestion, you're getting more and more smaller fragments, right? Because that nuclease is cleaving more times, okay? Cleaving that DNA more. All right, number five, what would be revealed in a gel if the length of this digestion was significantly increased? So if you kept letting this go longer this time, what do you think is gonna happen? Okay, I'm not gonna tell you that answer, but we should be able to figure that out. What's gonna happen? Meaning, what, um, what would be the size of your fragment that you would see? So I'll give you a hint that there would probably just be one fragment 
that you will end up seeing here. One of these fragments, okay? You're not gonna see multiple sizes, you're just gonna see one. So think about now, that nuclease was able to cleave that DNA in every single spot where you had that linker DNA, okay? So if that's the case, what are you gonna end up with, okay? What band would you have here? A, B, C, or D? Um, all right, number six says, what does this experiment tell us about the structure of chromatin? Now, I've been going through that all the time, you know, this whole time. So, you know, what, what does this tell us about the structure of chromatin? I've sort of been telling you that all along, okay? So now you need to write down that answer. Again, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to write because now based on going over this, we should be able to come up with that answer. So what is all of these, all of this tell us in terms of these different fragments that we got, right? When it's exposed to a nuclease over a certain time, what does that tell us about this, okay? In terms of where it's cutting, right? And where it can't cut. Okay, what the size of the nucleosome, a single nucleosome is, things like that. Okay, so again, I hope that helps. So what I want you to do is fix your homework assignment. Write these answers in so that they are correct. It doesn't do me or do you any good for me to just mark it wrong on your um, assignment and then really never make sure that we understand this because I think this is important. It, it, it ties together um, you know, the concept of understanding the structure of chromatin, but also understanding what a, what a nuclease is and what it does, and then how you can see what the nuclease did, right? How do you then, you know, visualize that, right? And so what tool do you use? You use electrophoresis. And, and then, you know, what information does that give you? And can you interpret the information from a gel, right? From this DNA gel that you, that you ran. Okay, so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of concepts mixed in here, and I think it, it is actually super important that we understand this. Okay, again, this is something that we would have done a bunch of times in lab this year, and unfortunately, we weren't able to do it. So I, I just want to make sure we understand electrophoresis and what information it can give us. Um, like I said, we would have done this for a couple different labs. And so we probably really would have understood what it did just by um, those couple experiences that we would have got. And so now I'm sort of asking you to understand all of that based on just one assignment, okay? So I wanted to make sure that I really went through this with you. Um, if you feel like you want me to go through it a little bit more, I'm more than happy to, okay? Now, when you take, you know, upper level courses like molecular techniques or research methods, we will run gels again, but really in cell bio was one of the places where we really did run a lot of gels and we really came away with understanding the concept of running a gel and what electrophoresis really is. Um, and, and people run gels in labs all the time, right? So this isn't just something you would just do in, you know, undergrad and it's meaningless, right? It's super, it is a super important um, technique to learn and to understand, okay? Like I said, you can run gels for proteins, okay? And people run gels for proteins all the time, a little more sophisticated um, and, there's, and there's definitely a little bit more involved, but again, understanding the basic concept of running a DNA gel then puts you in a better position to understand how a protein gel works. And then from there, Western blot, right? There's so there's so many different techniques that are sort of based off um, the simple procedure of running a gel. All right. And so hopefully I, I, I convinced you uh, to care. Um, and so I want you guys to fix that assignment and resubmit it, please. Okay. Thanks. Bye.